Next on BYUSN, a big NBA personality discussing BYU at the NBA Combine yesterday, and not just Jackson Robinson. Based on those comments, what would you consider winning big for Kevin Young at BYU? Basketball radio analyst Mark Durant will join us to discuss that and what his top priority is for BYU men's hoops right now. What would qualify as a bounce back season for Cougar football? We'll discuss. And former Utah and Cal player Kimmery Martin of Women's Hoops on why she's coming to Pro. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Wednesday, May 15th. I am Spencer Linton. He is a man who's considering driving a minivan once again, just like he did in his college days, Jerem Jordan. Yeah, I owned a minivan that I bought for 30 bucks from someone. I can't even remember who it was. $30? Oh, yeah. I've, I've purchased two cars for $30. Super random. Where are you getting these deals? I don't know, but... I, I thought I, I was deal guy. I wish I could get them now. Uh, I once took uh, a whole a whole apartment full of uh, girls to a dollar movie, so uh, out on a date, you know, hugged all six of them as of they went back. Did. Yeah, it was super fun. <laughs> the reason we bring that up <laughs> is that Dan Lanning, the Oregon head coach, talked about Dylan Gabriel. Remember him? Oh, Dylan at Oklahoma? Gabriel, uh, the at transient UCF. one. Yep, he is in Eugene, and Dan Lanning said he drives a minivan around because he can pick up the wideouts and go take them to throw. That's the kind of guy he is. Mm. So Dylan Gabriel rocking the minivan. Remember when Jacob Conover had the BYU plastered minivan oh, yes. in Provo? He's going to Utah State now, by the way. So uh, minivans, man. There's another minivan <laughs> in Logan or Ogden or it's, Logan, whatever. Uh, where is it? Yeah, that's I, that's a pretty funny story. I just want to know what type of minivan Dylan Gabriel is driving. Like, does he have an NIL? No, does he have like an NIL where I the would Toyota so. dealership's like, "Hey, we'll give you this sixty-five thousand dollar Toyota Super Sienna nice. Platinum oh, <laughs> Hybrid." I would hope, like, he's a quarterback and he's too high profile. It's Oregon now, Big Ten, which mm-hmm. is weird to say in a sentence. I would think he's got a nice one, not a clunker like I had. Uh, it has to be a nice one, right? <laughs> the university provided. Come I on. don't know. Lots of things are legal now that weren't legal. Just we got plenty of minivans ago. around these parts. By the way, yeah. uh, you go on minivan soon? Uh, no. With, uh, family expanding, Jim? No. No, no minivan. No minivan. You're no. anti. I'm not. No, I'm pro. <laughs> uh, oh. I just <laughs> like the car we have. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Hey, that's all good. We all got we got a, a Palisade that I like so. Yeah, yeah that, that's, uh, that's... Palisade, that's what people get when they can't get a Telluride. Hyundai. The Hyundai Palisade. Don't, Korea you're, cars for the win. You're Korean coming up. <laughs> Hyundai! <laughs> All Hyundai. rise and shout. It's time for What's Trend. Got it! Players want to play here. That's how you beat the press! If this place is going to be rocking. We're going to get this thing rolling. Right down the barrel! The, the main message is I want those guys here. What's Trending presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group serving Utah since 1968. How about this? Yesterday, during one of the scrimmages at the NBA Draft Combine, friend of the show Sean Farnham asked Adrian Wojnarowski, the Woj Bomb producer, if the Kevin Young move to BYU surprised him, given that Kevin appeared to be in line to become an NBA head coach. Here is Woj's response, and I quote, He would have been an NBA head coach. Mm. And I think in almost every case that I could cite, if a coach has a choice between the NBA and college basketball, he is going to choose the NBA. And Kevin Young made a choice that was certainly a choice about winning, that he could win big there, and about his family, end quote. We know all about the family ties. He's been very vocal about that. He talked at length about it with us just a few days ago in Studio B. But the winning big comment is interesting. Winning big. What would you consider winning big to be for Kevin Young as the BYU head coach? Winning big is competing for a Big 12 title. Winning big is making it to the second weekend in the NCAA tournament. That means the Sweet 16. To me, that's what winning big is. So certainly the ambition level is high, given that uh, he could have been an NBA coach, you would think, at some point, as Woj mentioned. Uh, you know, He clarified and said he didn't get the Nets job wasn't offered the Nets job recently, but he was certainly on track to get one if he stayed in the NBA. So it was the choice that has caused us all to be like, whoa, why did he, why did he go to BYU? He, this is the only college job he would have come to, which is pretty crazy. So winning big is, yeah, competing for a Big 12 title, which means you're in the hunt. You're like a game or two within uh, you know, of the championship if you don't win the regular season. 
and then you get to the Sweet 16. That's what winning big to me is, especially at these parts where BYU's been to the Sweet 16 plus only twice in the history of Cougar basketball, which uh, has an illustrious and winning way. Most NCAA tournaments without a Final Four and so on, it's a good and bad stat, right? Good that you make the tourney that many times. Bad that you haven't once sealed the deal and, and got to the Final Four. One day that will happen here, I believe. But uh, that's what winning big looks like to me. Do you feel it's different than those two? No, it's getting to rare air and rare territory, which for BYU is the Sweet 16. Yep. Frankly, winning big in Kevin Young's first two or three seasons would be getting BYU to a second-round game. Like, yeah. And that's a conversation maybe for another day, which is what do we really expect from Kevin Young in year one and then in year two? Like how much time are BYU fans a patient gonna be? going to give Kevin yeah. Young to really set up his system and for him to settle into a brand-new arena? Like, this is – like I, we're all ambitious, and he's he's already doing work. It is incredible. I'm very very optimistic about Kevin Young. In the two weeks or whatever it is that he's been BYU, he's like is it three now? I don't know. I think it's been three. It has it hasn't been that much time, yeah. but what he's been able to do in convincing key players to come back and staff moves that he's been making is all super fun. It's really really exciting, but there has to be some patience given to him. Like, it's going to take a little bit of time for him to figure out what this really is and for him to be able to sell certain players and recruits on his ability to help them develop as NBA players. So that's a huge thing. And Walsh talked about that. He said he's going to work in the portal. This, this will be a huge selling point that he can develop NBA talent. and He'll get his guys. But how much time are we going to give him once he has his guys and to develop a pipeline of better talent? We, I mean, fair to say we believe Kevin Young is going to get better talent to BYU than the Cougars have had in recent memory? If he doesn't, what's the point of all that NBA exactly. experience? Exactly. So winning big can also be in recruiting, but that takes time. And he's already winning, but that, give him two years, and we'll see what kind of talent Kevin yeah. Young can bring in in a yeah. couple of years. So maybe by year three, we're looking at this and going, holy cow, BYU has almost a complete roster of four stars or better. Like that – that's what to where people, they should be like top six in the league or yes, something. Like, yes. We're, we're unsure right now kind of where they fit exactly. We think that they're kind of middle of the pack in the Big 12, which is a tourney team-ish. Yeah. But and I see two sides of the coin in the, the Kevin Young experiment, if you will, the experience. One is he could sell right now like, yes, I haven't coached in college, but I've been in the NBA. I know how to get you to that level. But also the other side is if, I, if I'm a recruit, like – I do have a question, and BYU has – we have these questions, is how is he going to fare in college as a college coach? It'll be exciting to watch that evolve, but you're right. What will year one be like? Will there be a, okay, it's going to take a sec, we're figuring some things out as a program, dot, 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 or will it be similar to last year? I don't expect BYU to be top 15 in net the whole time. <laughs> like, that was nuts. I don't expect that. Or number one in net at some point. Or number one for weeks. <laughs> like, what? That was amazing. Six seed as an at-large was ex extremely rare for BYU to get that high of a seed and do that. Remember how in the Dave Rose era, BYU was fighting for an eight seed most of the time, and then they, they got Jimmer, and they got a seven and a three. Like, you're the national you, – you had an uh, all-American guy, you got a seven and a three. And so it, it just – it's hard to get a good seed – a good matchup, you got to win. And so we'll talk about that another day. But, yeah, the, the, the experience and the optimism and the idea is so, is so different. We have never in any sport at BYU ever had a professional, amazing assistant come in and be like, whoa, we could right away expect to be very good uh, or, or different in that space. Gary Croton came as OC of the Bears to BYU, but the Bears weren't blowing the doors off. Like, it was cool that he was an OC. Sure. But it wasn't like top paid OC in the NFL. No. It wasn't like that and he situation. Was still, he was still utilizing Lavelle Edwards recruits. Yes, and he wasn't this close to being a head coach in the NFL either. This is, this is a unique situation, and so it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. We've never experienced this. This is, this is exciting for BYU to have this situation. Yeah, the winning big comment clearly – involves 
getting past the first round of the NCAA tournament. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we laugh to keep from crying, but and, it's been so difficult. And, and like teaser to the subject we'll discuss another day because we have to do a, a show every weekday, except we start taking Fridays off in two weeks, which is exciting. But what, I don't expect a, a win in the NCAA tournament per se. I would just want to make sure BYU gets there Get at there. least. Obviously, we want to win. Let's not be dumb. But I don't say you have to win in year one. Wouldn't that be wild if BYU did get to the tournament and won a game? Because then Kevin Young in year one would have done something that BYU has not done. Getting the But they would have done since in 2011. In 2020. They would have done it in yeah. 2020. Yeah, okay. I know. We'll discuss another day in depth. Topic two. Yesterday, uh, for our top five Tuesday, we named the top five bounce back seasons mm. in Cougar football history. So what would qualify as a bounce back season this fall? <laughs> Great comments coming in. This is also our question of the day, and we'll get to that in just a moment. <laughs> but based on BYU's projection of winning four and a half games, according to the Action Network and DraftKings and, you know, friends in the desert, essentially. Your mom dot blocks the, Goodness. Yeah. Expectations are certainly not high for BYU. They no, won winning crazy five low. last year, expected to win maybe one game less this year. Gulp. Nope. Yeah. For me, it's a winning record, and however, however you get to that, if that includes a bowl game win, fine. But oh, seven, so seven regular gotcha. season wins yeah. to me would feel like a clear bounce back because that likely means you win at least – well, you would have to. You would have to win at least four conference games. You would have to. If you want to win seven games in the regular season, maybe you go two and one in non-conference and you, you have and a five in winning record – in league play at five and four, that would get you to seven regular season wins as well. Yep. That to me yep. would count as a bounce back. You need to do something significant to call it a bounce back. It can't just be, oh, just get to a bowl game and go six and six. You lose the bowl game, you're six and seven. Was five and seven really that much worse than six or six, seven, that much better than five and seven? No, you can't call you it just a bounce elongated back. the season. Hey, those 15 practices though. You have to win seven games to call this a bounce back and win at least four games in the Big 12. Spence, I think it's eight. Eight! I, I think, like, bounce back implies a little more to me. Um, you got to win eight games in any fashion, right? That could be... The bowl game? That could you be in the bowl five, game. You go seven and five and you win yeah, a bowl game? Yeah, eight and five. I'd take eight and five right now, bro. Oh, if you are said, you kidding me? If you said eight and five or play it out for more, I'm taking that eight briefcase. Five. Eight and five. Where are we Give going Give me that bowling? briefcase Where right are we going Take me to Shreveport. I don't it's even care. Take me to church, <laughs> take Shreveport, wherever. If BYU got eight wins, okay, Southern Illinois win at SMU. I don't know, bro. They, at might, Wyoming, be, they might be a top 25 team. At Wyoming's not a guaranteed win to me. Nope. That's not. So we got one. And then what's a guaranteed win in league? Ready? Kansas State mm, at Kansas Baylor. Kansas State be picked to win the conference. Right? At Baylor. Uh, Arizona. No. <laughs> Oklahoma State. Yeah. At UCF. At Utah. At Arizona State. Hopefully, okay. win. Okay. Houston. Uh, home game. Three. three. There's three <laughs> we think wins right there. I, I am freaking out that there's not more <laughs> preseason right now where we're like, boom, 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 boom. Uh, is that Wyoming the fourth most winnable game? Is yeah. it more winnable to beat Houston and Arizona State at home than it is at Wyoming? What's is that what we what's just crazy is Arizona, State, Arizona Sorry, State's program Arizona State is in a place where we're asking the question, <laughs> is it a better matchup at Arizona State or at Wyoming? <laughs> at Wyoming. That is crazy. That's crazy. Okay, bounce back seasons. Let's look back at some of the, the best. Cougar stats true, providing True this. bounce back. Well, this is yeah. four, four wins better than oh, the season before. Four is bounce back for sure. 96 was seven wins better. That was why wow. that was the number one team yes. and number one bounce back season on our list yesterday. 2001, 6 to 12, Gary Amazing. Croton. 06, 6 to 11. Mm -hmm. 2020, 7 to 11. 94, which is an underrated season, man. 6 to 10, 69. No one thinks about 1969. Two wins to 6, 50, 0 to 4, 32, 4 to 8. There it is hard to go plus 4. You really ain't going plus 4 this year. Like, nine, nine wins would be amazing. I'd take eight right now. You, you think seven is a bounce back. We'd all take a winning record given the, the lack of sort of transfer portal incoming guys that were like, boom, we are way different. Now, do we need to think about players that returned like their portal guys in that because they stayed, 
that means something. Or is it – like, Ben Bywater returning That's big. is better than any linebacker BYU could have brought in out of the portal, I think. I mean, getting, so right? getting Jack Kelly and having Ben Bywater yes. stay, huge boost for BYU. The reason you don't think of it that way is because you're like, well, we are X, but we need to add to what we had, right? Mm. It's just that last year BYU lost so many pieces. It was like, what is this team going to be? Well, it didn't turn out like we thought or like they thought. They were 5-7. and seven. Hopefully BYU bounces back. What does that look like? You tell us in our uh, question of the day. Whoever the quarterback is, just throw it up to Darius Lasseter and let him make athletic plays. <laughs> Chase Roberts, <laughs> Cody Epps. BYU has great receivers. Parker Kingston. They have proven solid yes. receivers. Yes, and how one of the best receivers them? on the team is actually Jacob Robinson because the opposing quarterbacks throw it to him too. And how much stock do we need to put into the new members of the staff? Because if you talk to the offensive line yes. and Connor Pay, they're like, this world's different. If, if BYU, BYU can be better with TJ Woods as our offensive line coach. Second and six is very different what from second What is Kevin Gilbride going to bring to the table as yeah. a tight end Speaking coach? of pro experience. Jay Hill in year two of his defense. How much is that worth? Is it worth two whole games? That's a lot. That's a lot. And right now, Vegas says it's not worth hardly anything. In fact, it's worth, it's worth less. a half game less than what BYU won last year. Schedule might be tougher. We'll see. But BYU cannot go 2-7 and seven in league. How crazy it is can't that? can't go 3-6. and six. What you just said, the schedule might be tougher. BYU does not play Texas or Oklahoma, and the schedule might be tougher overall top to bottom. You might not have, like, the yeah. high-end opponent right, per right, se. right, right. The balance, of the tough there's, balance. Oof. There's no college football playoff team there unless Utah actually does it. Our question of the day. We answered it, kind of. <laughs> Seven and eight? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. What would qualify as a bounce back season for BYU football? At Y for Life on X says, the National Bar is set at a high of four and a half wins. <laughs> National Bar, a.k.a. Vegas. Bounce back season is six wins and a bowl. A bowl win is a solid bounce back. So a bowl win would get them to seven. I feel like it has to be seven to even be in the conversation. Oh, yeah, it's it has to be. I started at eight. Yeah, I was even higher. Yeah. Daniel Rigby on X says, bowl game and being competitive in every game. Last year, BYU was being blown out four times. That's a great point. Like, margin of loss. Be more competitive. <sighs> Yeah, the blowouts. There were some blowouts too. at the end of the Yikes. year that were really hard. Home, hurt. Iowa State, West Virginia. Ugh. Yeah, 20, yeah. 29, 30, 28. Ugh. Game at TCU. It's tough. I mean, and he says three times blown out by average slash mediocre teams. TCU ended up being meh. They weren't very good last year. I, Iowa State was okay. West Virginia was better than we expected. Yeah. Still, yeah. be competitive. Yeah. Hashtag BYUS on yep. X, Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Win winners talk about wins. Losers talk about margin. I've talked about. Ugh. Let's just win. Join us for a fan fest coming up at the Gilbert Regional Park in uh, Arizona. Coming up Saturday at uh, 2 Eastern time on BYU TV and BYU Radio. It's going to be 102 degrees. The Is it up to 102 now? The takes will literally be hot. Okay. <laughs> up next, Mark Durant of BYU men's basketball and his radio expertise on the biggest roster needs and what are realistic expectations like for Kevin Young? This is BYUSN. BYU Sports Nation is sponsored by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Noah Waterman of BYU men's basketball has officially entered the transfer portal. We'll see what happens with Noah. We'd love to have him back. BYU is, is really stepping up to the plate in a lot of ways and committed to being not just good, but great. We are live at Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. It's time to welcome in BYU legacy basketball player and a man whose voice we have grown to love so much over the years as the BYU basketball radio analyst. He is Mark Durant. Mark, welcome back to BYUSN on a beautiful day. I hope that at some point you're out on the links swinging a golf club. Always, always on the golf course. That's my, that's my other life besides BYU basketball. My daughter Stratton plays and for Bingham High. They're going to state next week. We're excited about that. So anyway, it's, it's a good life. Usually, though, guys, I'm... Uh, I am just playing golf. I'm not talking a lot about basketball, but this has been a crazy couple months here to talk about BYU sports. And so, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things, I guess. 
Indeed it is. And uh, the conversation on the golf course or off it certainly, as you mentioned, has centered around BYU basketball specifically because of all of the changes. Notably, and most recently, Noah Waterman enters the transfer portal. So let's start there, Mark. What type of a loss would this be for BYU if he decides to find greener pastures and does not come back to BYU? Well, I love Noah Waterman, and I was just so impressed how he improved from his first year to last year. And I think he's a difference maker on the floor. Now, sometimes his stat line might not be the most impressive, but when you have a 6'10", 6'11", guy that can guard the perimeter and shoot the, shoot the three and stretch the defense, and then was, he was a great rebounder last year. I mean, you notice when he's not on the floor. And uh, so I think that was that was personally sad for me because I love Noah. He's got a great story and and I think was enjoying his time at BYU. But uh, that's the that's the world we live in, that, that young men need to explore certain options. And he gave a lot to BYU while he was here. My my hope is he'll come back. But uh, wherever he goes, I love Noah Waterman. I'll always be a fan and I'll always be cheering for him uh, as a person. But man, he I expected him to make another jump uh, this year uh, and even be even better and shoot better and be more aggressive and better rebounder. And there's no reason to think he wouldn't do that. So I think it's a significant uh, loss for BYU to, to have him go into the portal. There are eight players currently on the roster, certainly two coming in in Brody Kozlowski, which was a huge get, and Kaba Keda from Utah, who could be the starting center. He'll battle it out with Foose. Those two dudes from Mali can figure it out, which will be fun. What's your priority as BYU assesses five open scholarships right now? Yeah, well, I think you need more size. I mean, that Cato uh, signing was just magnificent for me. I, I really like him. I really, I mean, watching that Utah game this year, obviously Carlson, great scorer and big and talented, but uh, talk about difference makers. When Cato, when Cato was in the game, it changed the game, and he was a, just a force inside and, and so athletic. He reminded me of Kate up at Utah State, just so super athletic. And and BYU fans are just going to just, just be drooling when they see just how athletic he is and what a force he can be. So I love that, but I still think you need some more size to compete in the Big 12, give you some depth there. Uh, obviously, you know, you can never have enough shooters, especially if no Waterman's leaving um, uh, perimeter guys. but I mean, you've got a really nice core. That's the nice thing. You've got a really, really good core, and now you can just try to add pieces to that and supplement that. So uh, Coach Young's done a heck of a job, you know, bringing back that great core that I think will get better and better. Like we saw, again, a lot of those guys really improved. Dallin and Richie from, from their freshman year to sophomore year, we're going to see another improvement. So you've got guys that are getting older in the system that have played together, that are getting better. And then you add in some guys, uh, obviously, you know, you, maybe some kind of a backup. You, you, Dawson Baker's health is always questionable, so maybe another backup for Dallin at the point would be nice uh, just to spell him because he, he carried a heavy load last year. But, uh, I mean, at this point, you're just kind of trying to find the right fit, uh, and, and it's not even about position. Let's just bring in the best players we can to add some depth uh, all around. But that core is, is really nice for BYU. Mark Duran is on BYU Sports Nation. With that core in place led by Dallin Hall and Richie Saunders, Trevin Nell, Foose, and others, Mark, what are realistic expectations for Kevin Young in his first year as a head coach at the collegiate level, knowing that he's going to add some more key pieces? Well, first of all, I'm looking at myself in the camera, and I got this, you know, I'm bald, and I got this <laughs> halo with the light. And I mean, it's like dark, and I look at Spencer and Jerem, and they're just like young and beautiful. And I got to come into studio a lot one of, of these times here. and get yeah. some makeup, and because uh, this is not this is not being fair to me, because I'm really handsome. I promise. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you know, listen, I think Kevin Young uh, has has been terrific, and uh, and what he's able to do, and and I just like the excitement that he's he's brought because. You know, I was on a month ago or whenever it was when he got hired. The announcement came. I can't wait to see what happens on today's show because that was pretty exciting. <laughs> I was on the on with you guys when that happened. Mm -hmm. But I think he's done a terrific job, and uh, I think he's he's got a unique approach, and he's not 
He's very different from Mark Pope in personality, and it's uh, and I love Mark Pope, but it's almost refreshing. Uh, he, he's just, you know, he's not putting on a. I'm not saying Mark Pope put on a show. I love Mark Pope; he's the best. But he's just a, a, a very exuberant personality. Yes. And I think Kevin Young is just like I, this is how it is, guys. And and anyway, it, 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 it's always different personalities are good, and maybe this is an, a nice change for the program to have Kevin Young come in and he's got great connections and I think he connects well with the, the young man and he's straightforward with them. And, uh, and I think will is a great basketball mind and will incorporate those guys like Foose and Richie and, and Dallin that, I mean, those, those guys, listen, I, I personally know kind of uh, what some of those guys left on the table to come back to BYU and it's significant, and it means a lot to me that they would do that, and it shows how much they believe in in Kevin Young and the program and wanting to be at BYU. And, and so I like the direction Kevin Young's going. He's made some really nice hires in the coaching, uh, terrific hires. I love Chris Burgess. Can't wait to get to know some of the other coaches. Um, and, and so there's a lot to be excited for BYU fans as we move forward now the most popular coach is always the coach that just got hired. Right. So we'll see how it goes uh, in the future. Um, and hopefully we talk again this time next year, he'll be as popular because BYU will have a great, have had a great year. Um, but so far, really, really nice job from coach young. Yesterday on the NBA draft uh, and combine coverage, Woj said that uh, Kevin young feels like he can win big in Provo. What would winning big look like to you? Well, I, you know, it's crazy to think, but I, I think winning big means competing for a Big 12 championship, being in the top four or five every year, being in the conversation, having a chance to win a conference title, you know, doing well in the conference tournament, getting, uh, a, you know, a four, three, four, five, one, one through five seed in the NCAA tournament. I mean, that's kind of the characteristic of great programs, right? The Gonzagas, the Dukes, the North Carolinas, they're, they're always at the top of their conference, really good conferences. They're always getting a nice seed. They're winning games in the NCAA tournament. And I, I think that's probably that last thing is probably the most important for BYU fans, right? Obviously we, now, now we're almost taking for granted that we're going to get in the tournament. That's, that's great to be able to take something like that for granted. That's not necessarily true, but now there's an expectation but now winning games in the tournament, I think, that's what really makes great programs. Um, again, Gonzaga, they they not only get to the tournament, they win games in the tournament. Uh, and and I think that's what marks a great program is continued success, winning games in the tournament, top of their conference, getting high seeds. And then success breeds success, right? It's a snowball effect. And when you are a successful program, people want to be a part of that. And you do better in the NIL. You do better in the transfer portal because people want to, wherever they go, they want to be going to a place that they know is going to win games, is going to be in the NCAA tournament, get a lot of exposure, and that sends guys to the, NC, or to the NBA. And I think that's one of the most attractive things about Kevin Young is that he wants guys that, and, and to, to get guys into the NBA, that type of player, and then to get BYU guys in, into the NBA, which hasn't been the case really for a long time for BYU. I mean, there's obviously been one or two here and there, but it needs to be a steady stream of professionals coming out of Brigham Young University. He is a pest collector. He is a lawyer. He is a BYU basketball insider, and he is a man with a halo of sorts. He's on handsome his head right now. <laughs> That's the pest. <laughs> the collection grows even more. <laughs> Impressive, Mark. Um, well, apologies for getting distracted on that, but it's hard not to when you look at that just unbelievable pez. Uh, collection you have right there. I do need to ask this because of everything that Kevin Young has done. We've talked about all of the good work that he has already put together in a very short amount of time. What would you say is his best acquisition to this point, whether it's a staff member or somebody on the roster or otherwise? Well, in my view, keeping Dallin and Richie uh, was, was the biggest thing. Um, but they're the heart of the team, along with Foose. And uh, for him to be able to convince those guys when 
what was being thrown at them and to come back to BYU and to have that legacy and uh, have a chance for for greatness uh, with BYU. Uh, you know that that took a lot of belief by those kids in, in Coach Young. Um, the the things that may last the longest are you know his uh, maybe some of his coaching hires, which he has. I think Chris Burgess is a a really impressive man and a great coach, um, and really good at developing players. So, uh, I mean, it'll all have to pan out, like I said, in the future for Coach Young, and uh, a lot of the decisions now can only be judged in a couple years from now, but. Uh, I think keeping those players, having them have a belief in him and the system and wanting to stay at BYU uh, when, like I said, uh, it, it would be hard to turn down what they turned down to be a part of BYU. And me as a fan, uh, uh, just really are impressed by the maturity of those guys and kind of the understanding that there's more to life than uh, money. It's not to say that they're not getting taken care of at BYU. I think BYU is now very competitive along those lines, but uh, I think uh, I think Richie and Dallin and all of BYU fans are starting to believe in Coach Young with what he's doing and uh, are excited about the future. Mark, uh, we'll finish with this. I just, because I know you're a BYU football fan, our question of the day is what would a bounce back season qualify or what would qualify rather as a bounce back season for BYU football after five and seven a year ago? I believe in the Cougars, and uh, I believe in Kalani Sataki. He's going to make the right decisions, and uh, he's going to get those guys. Sometimes it's great to be an underdog. I remember coming in my freshman year, we lost Mike Smith. We were picked last in the WAC. We ended up uh, winning the conference. So don't count the Cougars out. Uh, guys will step up. They'll get better. They're going to have a, a winning record and go go bowling. Uh, and BYU fans are going to be pleasantly surprised. Bookmark this. Replay it next year when you have me on because the Cougars are going to be back. They're going to be winning games, and Kalani Sataki is is my guy, and he's going to lead the way. Let's go. Good vibes, positivity. Like Mark Durant. Hey, great to talk to you, Mark. We appreciate the time. Hey, I love you guys. Like I told Jeremy Spencer, my son's getting married, and you're invited next month. Let's brother. go. you got to get up here, all right? All right. Hey, count me in. Thanks. Party Mark. with the Durants. <laughs> Always a good time. Thanks, Mark. That's right. That's uh, right. There are South wet. Jordan's going to be happening in spa. Yeah, absolutely. Always. So there are weddings, and then there are wedding parties. And then there's the Durant's. Durant parties. Yes. We like no a good question. Durant party. <laughs> hey, check out uh, part two of the Deep Blue podcast featuring President C. Shane Reese, President of BYU. He actually talks about taking a mission prep class from Mark Durant's dad. Yeah. Awesome. That's amazing. Uh, how he almost left BYU originally. The amazing story of meeting with a professor who happened to be the guy that he filled in for, Kevin Worthen, as president uh, after uh, he was done. Amazing podcast, turning down the Eagles job with Andy Reid. All kinds of stories. It's wherever you can find your podcast. Up next, this is wild. Our non-conference games between conference teams, good for college football, because that's happening. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Follow BYU Sports Nation on the social medias. Uh, unnecessary S is great. The Facebooks, the X's, the Instagrams, the YouTubes, and the TikToks. All right, let's do this. Back in Studio B, it is time for a very, very loaded rundown of headlines. Jackson Robinson played in the first of two scrimmages at the NBA Draft Combine in Chicago yesterday, scoring 10 points on three of nine from the field, two of five from distance. Second scrimmage is today on the Deuce, ESPN2. How about this? BYU Men's Golf just updating this as we came back from break. They are currently tied for third through 48 holes of the NCAA Regionals in Austin. That is updated from fourth place when they began the day. Cougars are five under par now as a team through the first two and a half rounds. The top five teams will advance to the NCAA championships. BYU currently four shots ahead of sixth place. Which guess is who's in sixth? Utah, Utah is in sixth place. Baseball beat Grand Canyon 8-7 thanks to two homers from Luke Anderson who played the game sick. Colin Reuter and Cooper Vest added homers as well with the win. BYU now 20-29 on the season. That was the last home game of the year. 
You know who really got into BYU baseball, especially at the end of the year? John, by the way, showed yes. up the last couple of games. Yes. The Cougars play at Kansas State starting Thursday in the final series of the week and the season. Today marks NFL schedule release day. We'll learn the dates for every single one of the NFL games, including all of the Cougars in the NFL games. Go. The National Football League released the opponents for each team earlier this year, so that's not news. It's just when you play and the times associated. I will submit that to my wife and say, here's when I'm not available. Running alumnus Roy Linklater. Linklater was officially named to the Canadian Olympic team for the marathon. Congratulations to Rory. He joins Connor Mance and Clayton Young as former Cougars who will compete in the marathon in Paris. Not one, not two, three Cougs in the marathon. Three in the marathon and a gymmer in 3x3 basketball. Tonight, Whitney Bauer and Kamile Hiapo will compete with the Atlanta Vibe against the Grand Rapids Rise in the semifinals of the Pro Volleyball Federation's first ever playoff at 7 p.m. Eastern in the Chai Health Center in Omaha, Nebraska, where BYU played Duquesne in Men's March Madness. Did I say that correctly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't actually ask anybody when I was there how to say it, but... Chai Health Center. The Chi Health Center. It's very, uh, it the might be. I don't, I don't know. Those are today's headlines. Now some opinions in the whip. I wasn't there long enough to figure it out. So ah, like, I oh, hate that you boo, weren't there long enough. Boo. Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. The NFL schedule comes out tonight. How stoked are you to not have to act like you care about the Jets anymore? Over the moon, Jerem, <laughs> about not having to act like I care about the New York Jets. Boom. Oh, it's I agree. sad that we're here, but man, that organization has worn me and every other BYU fan and Zach Wilson mm. supporter out. It, it doth stinketh. It's rough to me. Okay, well, enough of that. Let's just Next. Let's, let's put that one to bed. Next one. Brett McMurphy reported this morning, and this is crazy, yep. that Virginia and NC State have scheduled a home and road series in 2025 and 2026. Okay, you're like, okay, great. They're conference opponents. These are non-conference games. Among what, conference what, teams. What in the world? So are non-conference games between conference foes good for college football? I don't really like that. I want some diversity of non-conference opponents. Uh, BYU as an independent was doing that fully, right? But I don't want to play the same kind of teams more than like twice. And now that Utah's in the league, that doesn't need to be that game. There is a scheduling requirement, as I understand it, in the Big 12 that you need to play a power four now opponent. So no, I don't want that. If it's like a situation where it's an emergency scheduling because something happens or fine, whatever, you got to throw something together. But that was like COVID. This isn't COVID. This is years out. So why? You can't find you can't find any other team available? Yeah, I guess not. I don't really like it. Yesterday, Doug Gottlieb was named the head coach at Green Bay, uh, not the Packers. Uh, they have an actual it's university Green there. Bay. Yeah. Uh, he's going to continue to host his own two-hour daily radio show for Spock Sports. What? Which current BYU uh, media member would you hire to be the uh, coach of the men's basketball team and still kind of do that? Uh, well, if we're going with, and I'm being liberal in my definition of liberal current, current media member. Uh, Jimmer Fredette was on our pregame show a few times. <laughs> Jimmer is that coach. So, but did I have like a daily pod going still? <laughs> That's so weird that he's still gonna do that. And he's that. kind of in the media, so like he's yeah. Like I I I'd lean toward Jimmer for debt as the potential head coach if and I had to go there. He can do it on the road in the hotel or uh -huh. whatever. It's like it's it's unique, right? If he's doing a TV show, it's you know I guess like Will Bond could coach a team and still do PTI at four thirty. JJ Redick is an interesting option because the Lakers want him maybe to be their next head coach, and he's become a very very he could absolutely be LeBron's puppet. <laughs> Gosh. I love the juxtapositions of Michael Jordan after losing a series versus LeBron after losing a series. Like all of that is just like bubbled to the surface recently. Hey, you you know, based on how old we are, you know where our allegiances lie here. <laughs> and in my last name. Come on. Up next, she was first a Ute, then a Golden Bear, and now she's a Cougar. Heck yeah. Upgrade BYU women's <laughs> basketball transfer. Kemery Martin joins us next. Yeah. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. 
Welcome back to BYU Sports Station. We are live in Studio B. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Time now to welcome the newest member of the BYU women's basketball team. She is a transfer, started at Utah, then to Cal, and now you're home at BYU. Camry Martin is with us. Welcome to BYU SN. Oh, Thank you. Thanks for having me. You went to Corner Canyon, so uh, it's all coming back home, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's good to be back. I just want to know what Amber Whiting's recruiting pitch was to you. Like, what, what do you remember about it and what was said in those initial conversations? Um, yeah, I think it's just talking about first thing was what she saw me um, being here, being able to play my game, um, talking about her style of play, kind of having four out, um, wanting to play fast. Um, I think all that just kind of struck interest. And then, of course, being home and having that um, – home feel and having family and friends be able to come watch it's a big deal shoot threes and play fast and come home yeah, yeah. that sounds fun <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like uh, morning basketball for uh, Spencer and I. um what what was it uh like growing up here uh you know uh, in Salt Lake Valley now going to Utah going to Cal now be white did you grow up a Cougar or a Ute or how was it at home <laughs> um yeah I wouldn't say there's a strong rivalry or sides there it just kind of was neutral so it was, it was good. It's a very good political answer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to believe you here. It's true. It's, I promise. It's okay <laughs> it's if you grow up a Ute because now you're a Cougar, whatever. Uh, but, um, yeah, and Corner Canyon continues to obviously – Zach Wilson, Brody Kozlowski coming here. Corner uh, Canyon represent, right? Yeah. 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 More Beautiful. athletes coming to BYU. It's cool. When did BYU hop onto the radar in this timeline of transfer portal craziness? Um, yeah, I mean, I was recruited here, like, before I got into college. Um, so I guess I was on the radar then. By um, Jeff Judkins? Yep. By Jeff, okay. and then, uh, yeah, just once I got in the transfer portal, they they jumped on pretty quick. That fast, like how fast was it? Like first, like the within hours that I my name was entered in the portal. I like that. BYU yeah. knew they wanted you. Yeah. Let's go. That's right. um, what what is it about this kind of final season and go for you, besides on the court stuff that was most attractive for? Hey, BYU is a good fit for me. Um, just. Being home, or is it all that? being by family, yeah, yeah, that too. Um, I'm a big family person, so I'm just excited to have, you know, everyone be able to come out to games for my last season and be able to see and experience it too. Okay, t tell us what it's like to enter the portal. Oh, this mystical portal. <laughs> you, you put your name in or whatever, then what? Yeah. Uh, you're you, like waiting for just, people to contact you. Yeah, your phone kind of starts just buzzing and you get emails and calls and DMs like from any place they can get you, um, just reaching out and... Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Do you have like a wish list initially in your mind? Okay, I'm hoping maybe these couple of schools reach out. Um, what was that like for you? I know some people do, but I kind of was just open, kind of had options and allowed it to kind of play out. Okay, Le Lee Kamar told me you're the most chill person ever. <laughs> I can see it now. Yeah. Where does that come from? Kind of just relaxed and chill? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's how I've always just kind of been. But... Is that how your family is? Are your parents like that or a, a um, sibling? Yeah, I think there's a mixture in my family, but I'd say I'd probably the most chill out of it. Do you play chill? Because sometimes people have a different persona on the court. Yeah, um, I would think so, yeah. I, I get told that I look smooth while I do stuff. Mm, so okay. I think that kind of adds I've, to I've told you three-point shot's like the pretty, at least said it's like the prettiest three-point shot yeah. ever. <laughs> you, you like your stroke? Yeah, I do. It's awesome. BYU women's basketball transfer, Camry Martin is with us on BYU Sports Nation. For those that have not seen you play, how would you explain your skill set? You already said smooth and mm -hmm. make things look easy, but what, what type of player are you and what can fans look forward to seeing from you? Um, I just score and facilitator, um, just looking to score three levels. I do like the pull-up game quite a bit. Catch and shoot threes, um, yeah, I could do. Um, but, yeah, just facilitator, play fast, uh, play smart, um, yeah. What kind of rapport do you have with the current BYU women's basketball roster Notably, Amari Whiting, who's going to be your point yeah, guard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think just coming in, I know Kaylee Woodson is going on a, on a mission, um, which is awesome. But coach talked about, you know, coming in and because and, I think we play pretty similar. And so mm. being able to, best I can, fill her shoes uh, for the time being. But She there's shot some, a lot of threes. There's yeah. some three-point attempts we had. I was just going to say, exactly. there's some space to fill there, yep. which is super exciting. And obviously, it's a, a new league uh, coming into the Big 12. What have you kind of... Uh, heard or seen or what do you think about uh, being in the Big 12? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of changes happening. Um, but looking at the teams in Big, Big 12, like, I think it's still a great conference. I will see familiar faces from the Pac-12 a couple teams, um, which is totally fine. Uh, but I am excited to kind of experience that, um, the new groove of the different teams, the different players that I'll see. 
How much of a difference are you anticipating? Because it's not like the Pac-12 didn't have high-level basketball, right. especially on the women's side. Oh, they're really, fantastic. Really, really good. Yeah. But the Big 12 notably brings what most people assume is like a, like a physical toughness. Yes. So how are you preparing for that, and how much different do you expect it to be? Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm, I have too much expectation of being crazy different because I know the competition will be good. But like you said, it'll probably be more gritty and physical. Um, so definitely just kind of preparing for that, but still having expectations that all these teams are good. Can you speak to kind of the banner year that it was in women's hoops? And obviously you're competing against Juju and Cameron Brink and everybody in the Pac-12. And obviously Caitlin Clark is the headliner there and mm -hmm. Andrew Reese and so on. But like the WNBA has started, the growth of the game and the popularity has probably never been more popular. Yeah. Um, what, what's it like being in a player in college right now while this continues to grow? Honestly, it's super cool. It's super cool seeing faces that you're like, wow, I played against her a couple times and now she's in the league. Like, um, it's just fun because you're not like, you know, you're playing against like the highest level of competition that you can, which is awesome. Camry Martin is with us on BYU Sports Nation, new transfer for the Cougars. If you could send one message to BYU fans about what you think BYU women's basketball is going to be, what would it be? I think we're going to take big steps forward. Um, you know, with it being a newer conference, I still think that, you know, there's room to grow, but I think we're all kind of ready to take those steps and, and um, make progress and do really well this year. Have you been in the gym uh, to get shots up in the annex, or is that still to come? Still to come. Awesome. Yep. Yep. Making my way there. Very okay. Cool. What about uh, school? What, uh, where do you stand with school, and, and what are you hoping to do? I mean, obviously, if you can play professional basketball, that's awesome. <laughs> but uh, what interests you, and, and what are you studying at BYU? Yeah, so I actually just graduated with uh, my degree in sociology, um, and I've decided for this just this next year is to do the post back and kind of just look for internships and mm. kind of career paths because that's what I'm kind of open to, but got to figure out myself. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, welcome to BYU. Thank you. It's good to have you here. We're excited to watch you play. Yes. Yeah. Thank Can't you. wait to watch you make eight threes in a game. That's right. <laughs> Let's go to hey, hey, step in for Kaylee. Just shoot. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. I'm Thanks, Camry. Yeah, thank you guys. Okay, baseball taking on Kansas State in the final series of uh, the season starting tomorrow night, 7 Eastern on Big 12 Now on ESPN Plus and BYU Radio. Our question of the day, what would qualify as a true bounce back season for BYU football? More of your responses, and they're varying after the break. <laughs> There's some good ones. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation with our question of the day. What would qualify as a bounce back season for BYU football? At Stonely Justin on Instagram answers, nine wins and beating Utah. Hey, listen, we all want this. Would all of that. Answer me this. Yeah. Regardless of record. Would a win over Utah, Don't. that would that qualify as, as a, a bounce, bounce back? back? <laughs> no, because uh, BYU, Utah hasn't beaten BYU since uh, 2019. 2019. <laughs> it's been almost five years, Spence. <laughs> hasn't it been glorious? Too? It has been. It's glorious. Yes, absolutely. Okay, at 36 Sykes on X. Anthony. Sykes! Playoffs too much to ask? Yeah, next. Joe Tegardine. Eight wins and a bowl game. Which and is, a bowl game. It's kind of in line with you, but... I was saying eight wins, period. Just, just get to eight, yeah. however you get to eight. <laughs> eight, man, that'd be nice. See, and I'm, I'm like... I'm probably leaning seven regular season wins. Like, and then if you get to a bowl game... Yeah, like, and it's hard to postulate on bowl... What, what game is it? Who are you playing? When it, like... Is it the how? Snoop Dogg Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine BYU in that? It kicks off at 420. <laughs> Our elite voice of the day it was presented by Pax Healthcare Elevated. Andrew Smith94 on Instagram says eight wins. A bounce back for me signifies considerable improvement. So that plus, would be considerable. Plus three wins. Yeah, yeah. Given the difficulty of the conference, though, would would two wins is two wins enough? Be enough because it is a tougher conference. It probably would be, but when you say bounce back, just we're, we're up to this standard now. We're a year in, so we're kind of like, we're going. You got, you, we are Big 12. 
We're not like newcomer to Big 12. Yeah. yeah. Listen, if BYU wins eight the games. The Utah, next they have year, no idea about the Big 12. If BYU wins eight games next year, I'll figure out a way to work for Shizzle Dizzle into uh, <laughs> something <laughs> in a live broadcast. <laughs> Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. How about Puka Nakua, who bought his uh, mom Panina a car? Really emotional, awesome video that uh, Rams tapes put out there. Pretty, pretty cool. He's a good kid, man. This is so cool. And she is so deserving. She really. Oh, she's fantastic. First, first car that was bought for her since her now deceased husband Amazing. did for her. So it's really special. Yeah. Our thanks to today's guests, Mark Durant and Camry Martin. Roger right, Dennis, ran out of time. For Jeremiah Spencer, shout out to Samson Nakua. Yeah. See you tomorrow for BYUSN. Go Cougs. <laughs>